Hey, buddy. Oh, you're muted, Betty. That might be a good thing. I said, how's everybody on this beautiful day? It is a beautiful day, isn't it? It is. Are we still having the presentation of the debt service? Yep, that's on track today. Good. Should be interesting. Yep. <laughs> And Betty, check your email. I just sent you something. Oh, okay. Thanks. I'll check it on my phone. Hey, Kim. Hey, Mick. Hey, Kath, how are you? I'm all right, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> how are you? Uh, the same, the same, <laughs> you know, everything just keeps on going. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's relentless right now. We're also, you know, we're approaching the end of the school year and it's starting to get a little, uh, already starting to get a little uh concerning you know yeah what grade do you teach students. um i'm very lucky i teach sophomores uh which are fun some people don't like sophomores but i do uh, oh, yeah. i would choose those over the little ones they're uh you know they're crazy but that's fun and i teach a senior elective called satire which is lots of fun oh uh, good and then I, uh, I teach a class, which is all levels called uh, in the English language learners English class. So huh. uh, that's lots of fun too. That's nice. It's a, a bit of a challenge that one. <laughs> but, <laughs> that's good though. It's good you like it. Keeps, keeps you young feeling. <laughs> yep. You have some nice variety there. It's not like you're teaching three sections of the same thing. It is really nice that way. It really is, especially the nature of the, the EL class, it's a very yeah. transitional population. And even some folks that we keep in the class for two or three years, obviously we can't, if someone's there for two years, we can't teach them the same stuff. So we renew the curriculum every year. Right. So it's constantly changing. Yeah. Which is both fun and challenging. Yeah. That's the right combination. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Bernabe's here. Hello. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Hello. George. Hello. Hey, Burita. Hi, everyone. Hey, Burita. Hi there, Kat. <laughs> Hi, Marjorie. Hi, Betty. Burita. Uh, hi, Valerie. Hi, Val. Burita. Oh. Hey, everyone. Hi, Mr. Mr. Panico. Mr. Panico's here. We got the whole finance team here. Thank you. We got some heavy hitters today. Uh, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we need a couple more for a quorum. And we have some other people who seem to be on the way anyway. So we'll give it another minute or two. And we have um, uh, a Mr. Xi with us that I'm not sure I've met before. Mr. Well, Xi is part of our debt presentation crew. Uh, he's been described as a rock star finance by those in the know. So, uh, okay. Well, we expect to think that. Well, well, Nick, <laughs> thank you for that <laughs> wonderful introduction. Uh, Kathleen, uh, I'm, I'm, I've been the uh, town's. Uh, uh, underwriter for over the past decade. So all of your bond issues uh, has been assisted by our firm who put your uh, bond in the market. Thank you. <laughs> That's very helpful. 
Under, Welcome I, tonight. That's like underwater, <laughs> and I'm sailing on top, so I don't see you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for inviting me. Checking attendees and uh, need another minute or two. Um, Council President? Yes. Do we have a quorum? Uh, I think just. Uh, okay. But I'm looking to Three, see. Four. Under, what do we need? Five, uh, we six, need eight, seven, eight. eight. Yes, we have eight. Um, I, however, just want to check on. Mr. Glars, is that your phone? Eight, six, oh, seven, eight. Eight, seven, two, nine. Yeah. Six, yes. Okay, good. Uh, and I just want to check on. Um, yes, that's me. Hi, Mick. And Mr. Hey, Jackson Mick, just. Oh, there's Mr. Jackson. Okay. Yeah. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that may be just in case. All right. So let's get going then. Tonight we have um, debt um it and pension so first we'll have our presentation oh i'm sorry let's start uh i'll take this meeting out of recess at 606 p.m uh miss rental will not take the role but she will know uh, uh people's attendance uh tonight we do have three items uh, debt service that conversation will be uh monitored by myself it mr mcdowell if he uh, arrives and pension uh counselor horsley um, so having said all that, we first have scheduled a debt presentation. Uh, Mr. Jackson, um, I'll hand the floor over to you and you distribute as you will. Will any member of your team need hosting abilities tonight or co-host abilities to share their screen? Uh, no, I think we'll be, uh, I think we'll be fine to start, uh, uh, Mr. President. Um, if something comes up, we can certainly move in that direction. Um, but uh, in the interest of expediency, um, I don't see, no, I do see Mr. Bernabe. Okay, so yes. Mr. Bernabe is gonna sort of um, be the lead off. We also, uh, Mr. Bernabe is our financial advisor. Um, we have uh, Mr. Panico, who is our, uh, our bond counsel, and we have uh, Mr. Alex Shea, who is um, our underwriter. Um, and they are probably the best suited to, um, uh, to cover any questions. Uh, Mr. Galarza from our office um, is well deep, deep and uh, uh, understanding of the, of the long-term debt. Um, so he is also available. And uh, with that. Actually, could you pause one second, Mr. Jackson, Mr. Farmer? Councillor Farmer has uh, raised his hand. Uh, Councillor Farmer? Thank you, uh, Council President. You just had a point presentation. A presentation um, that isn't necessarily pertinent. So, Farmer, I'm sorry. It's, it's kind of hard to hear you. you. You're not coming across very well. Councilor Farmer? Better now? Yes, that's better. It's staying through. Oh, that didn't last long, Councilor Farmer. Perhaps you 
perhaps you could put it in the chat or or text me. Can you hear me No, it, I, if you're talking, it I can see the square around. But... Okay. Councilor Farmer, are you? Uh... Why, don't, why don't we move on and then we'll try to get back to uh, the, the question that Council Farmer has. Um, so, Mr. Jackson, if you could uh, go ahead, continue. Uh, certainly, and I, I think uh, that the team is well prepared to uh, move forward. Uh, the the, uh, the item that you see in the budget book um, represents a an understanding of where we are and what we need to do in terms of the uh, uh, debt service budget. Um, Mr. Galarza, uh, you've been here uh, for a few years. Can you, uh, is there anything else you would like to say before we turn it over to question? Mr. Galarza? Oh, I muted myself. No, sorry. Okay. Oh, Kai Council. No, Mr. Jackson, that's fine. Let's let Mr. Bernabe go through the presentation and then we'll answer Council's questions accordingly. Thank you. Okay, it's a it's a it, it's a large number, but a small amount of um entries. Uh so uh Mr. Bernabe, do you want to kind of walk us through how we got here? Uh keep in mind that we um have, I think, uh Mr. President, uh uh, three hours for three fairly large items. Is that accurate? Yes, we have. Uh, and we have tonight, we have debt service, the um, IT department, and the pension line. Um, of the three, I was considering doing pension first, as it's probably the least <laughs> uh, complicated one. But I figure we have all our folks here. Why don't we just get, get into the debt service? Yeah, Mr. Bernabe, uh, you have the floor, sir. Okay, um, good evening, everyone. Um, you know, just uh, uh, taking a step back a little bit, as, as uh, many of you may be aware, the, the town has done some debt restructurings over the last several years. And uh, we've been able to lower the town's, what I would call your natural rate, uh, your, 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 the, the, the normal debt service that the town would, would pay. Now, um, that normal debt service uh, would be around $30 million a year. We've lowered that quite a bit through these debt restructurings. And um, that has provided a lot of flex budget flexibility to the town and has helped to uh, mitigate the, uh, the, the mill rate. Um, the plan that we have in place is to continue to um, increase the debt service payment uh, for the town to try and get back up to that normal level, that normal rate. And, and, and the good news is in, in doing that, um, there is a good chance that we, that the town could, um, in, in your quest to increase debt service, uh, to, to keep debt slightly below uh, what you actually budget so that the, those excess funds actually fall into fund balance. Now, one of the challenges for the town over the last number of years is that the rating agencies have said that the town's fund balance is way too low. It's been below 1%. And unfortunately, over the last year, it's gone negative. So, so um, this plan that we have will replenish the fund balance to a positive number and potentially, potentially uh, grow it to um, between 15 and $20 million over the next several years, which, which to me, having worked with the town for, for 20 years, uh, could be transformative for the town. It, it, it could actually um, give the town uh, an argument for a bond rating upgrade instead of a downgrade. So um, with a debt budgeted at $22 million this year, uh, the, the, um, uh, 
there should be some excess funds after that that falls right into fund balance that will help replenish uh, the uh, to get that that fund balance back to a positive and eventually like I said to have it grow over the next couple of years but um, uh, in order to do that we're probably going to have to do a few more debt restructurings over the next couple of years to help mitigate it a little bit more but um, the, the 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 town is on track to uh, to to grow that that fund balance and uh, we're proposing to keep debt service at approximately 22 million dollars for fiscal 22 and uh, in, in that, uh, we should be uh, clear about uh, the differences between a refinancing and a restructure. Um, so in a matter of days, you will be seeing a refinancing package, um, which is, it's not, a, it's not a scoop and chuck. It's not kicking the can down the road. It's just yeah. going after... A reduction in in uh, uh, interest rate, um, well over um, the projections are well over a uh, hundred basis points. You know, one percent. That that's right. There is a potential there in the next couple of months, Scott, to to refinance, not restructure, but to refinance where there's actually aggregate savings. And the town is looking currently at about one, $1.1 $1 .1 million of savings. Um, but that's not gonna help too much for fiscal 22. Those savings will fall into fiscal 23 and thereafter. But for the budget for, for next year, um, if the town keeps the, the debt service budgeted at roughly $22 million, um, there actually should be, um, some savings there where, where um, close to five to $6 million will fall right into fund balance. But, but, but I caution the town, you have to remember that, that the natural level of debt service is closer to $30 million. Right now, the town's gonna be at $22 million. So you, you have a ways to go to get back up to that $30 million. So, so just be aware of the next several years the, the, the town's gonna have to ramp up that, that debt service level until we get up to $30 million. So that, that's about $8 million of increase over the next couple of years. So it, it is a challenge out on the horizon to, to get up to that, that amount. And again, all, all of this came from is that we, we did these restructurings in the past, again, to, to give the town budget flexibility and to help mitigate the, the debt service. But, but what, what we've done is we, we've taken, the town has taken from debt service to help other areas of the budget. But going forward now, I think it, it's important to kind of keep an eye on debt service and to be disciplined with it and, and to be aware that that number is gonna have to increase over the next several years. Even if the town never borrows again, if you say, listen, we don't wanna borrow anymore, uh, that debt service is still gonna rise back up to that natural level of about $30 million. Is this a, a good time for us to pause and ask some questions or is there more, more, more to be said or is this a pause and question time? Because we have a couple of hands up from folks. I think it's a pause question time. Okay. Uh, I'm going to start with a couple of questions of my own. So uh, do we need to get to $30 million uh, paying in our, our debt service? Um, when would, with the plan in place at this moment, when would we reach that number? Well, that, that's a good question. Um, we had talked about um, a plan to ramp up debt service by $2 million each year, but it's, it's, um, it's, it's, it's difficult to, to, to do that um, uh, in tough budget times with issues with going on with, with, with COVID. So, so uh, again, the, the short answer to your question is, <clears throat> my recommendation would be um, after fiscal 22 to increase the debt service budget by $2 million each year. So for 23, it would be 24 million. For fiscal 24, it'd be 26 million. For fiscal 25, it'd be 28 million. And for fiscal 26, it'd be 30 million. That, and, that would be my recommendation. Okay, thank you. And so where we're at, we kind of have uh, 
So the choice that's before us, we can, um, your recommendation is let's not start right away with putting money into our debt service, but growing the fund balance first. Is that, well, to say that, or is there a better way to say that? Well, um, yeah, I mean, the, the, the good thing about this plan is by, um, we're, we're, the actual debt service that the town is going to pay is going to be lower than what you're budgeting for. Now you might say, well, why are we doing that? Because frankly, your debt service right now is artificially low. We, we, we restructured it down low to provide budget flexibility, but we have to get it back up. So the rating agencies would like to see that debt increase each year until you get to that $30 million. But in conjunction with this, while you're growing debt service, a secondary benefit is that some of those savings are going to fall right into fund balance. So for, for, for the last 20 years, the, the, the town's fund balance has been way below where it should be. The rating agencies like to see at least 10% of your budget, 5 to 10% of your budget in fund balance. And Hamden has been below 1% for a long, long time. So, so th this plan accomplishes two goals. It gradually ramps up your debt service to get where it should be. And along the path, along the way, there's going to be savings, and those savings will fall, hopefully, into fund balance. Now, when I say hopefully there'll be savings, if, there's, if there are deficits in other areas of the budget, that will eat away at these uh, savings that are supposed to go into fund balance. But if, if the rest of the budget can be structurally balanced, then this excess debt service will continue to add to, to fund balance. And I think over a period of years, the town will be in a position to ask for a rating upgrade if that comes to fruition. Uh, and, and if I could, if I could uh, jump in on that one, um, we walked into a whirlwind last year, um, which led to last fiscal year, which led to a negative fund balance. And so one of the things that is incorporated in this is um, recouping those losses. Right. Thank you. All right. Um, we'll go through questions. Councilor Bonadies. Thank you. Thank you for that presentation. Very clear. You know, even a uh, Somebody not savvy in finance could follow that. So we know where we are, we know where we have to go, how we're gonna get there. Um, so what I'm, I'm hearing you say is that we have to still be very disciplined in our budget and not produce a budget that could have a deficit or um, uh, we, we will not, at the end of this ramp up, we won't have any fund balance. We, those things, the, that money, that supposed savings will just go into operating costs. Um, I have. I would like to know. You said you said more restructure. So how many more restructures are you thinking? What it, what is gonna, what is it going to take? Are we are we fine? Are we going to restructure? I know we're going to upcoming very soon. I know we're going to have a rate change. But are we going to restructure several more times at, during the ramp up? How is this going to work? Yes. Yeah, so so like I said, um, the town is at twenty two million dollars for debt service. Right. It ha it has to get to thirty. So right. So. The, the, there's two basic two, options. Two million you say, a year. You could say, listen, we're not going to do any debt restructurings. We're going to increase our budget from 22 million to 30 million, which is a very, very large step. So again, these debt restructurings are ways to mitigate those increases each year to make them more manageable. And, and, and that, again, is to the $2 million a year. That's what we want to try and do. Keep it to no more than $2 million increase each year. Okay, and when we hit 30 million, how many years will it stay around 30 million? If we're doing right now, uh, once you get to 30 million, it'll stay that way for um, a number of years, for about 10 years. Now, if the town were to approve more debt for more school projects, for more road projects, for more capital projects, then instead of peaking at 30 million, it could go up to 31 or 32 or 33. But right now, it's scheduled to peak at 30 million. Um, so where we are at 22, so, we're, so we think about that eight more million over 10 to 12 years. That's, that's a long time to be at a peak level of indebtedness. That's a really long time. That's going to, that's going to affect 
a generation of people. Um, I'm gonna let people ask questions. Thank you for the clarity. Thank you, Councilor McDowell. Thank you. Um, I wanna, forgive me if this is redundant. Um, the deficit mitigation plan, is that, you know, the restructure? Is that the savings we'll see from the restructure or is that something separate? Uh, if I may, if, if I may answer that, uh, that is um, under Connecticut general statutes, if you run a, a, a deficit into negative fund balance territory, um, you are to provide a plan in the next year to resolve that. So that is exactly what that is. Reflecting uh, the, the negative in the audit uh, that you saw a couple of weeks ago. It seems so. The answer is no. This this has nothing to do with the with the restructure. No, no. Okay. Uh, we're my, not question, my my question's off topic. Then, and I'll I'll save it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Council McDowell, Councilor Farmer. Thank you, Council President. Can you hear me now? Yes. Thank you. Through you. Uh, uh, Council President, um, uh, it does. Oh, there you are. Um, if we do so, uh, I, I'm having a hard time understanding because uh, uh, Mr. Bernabe uh, and Director Jackson, um, when I've heard about this restructuring, y'all have talked about four or five months down the line from now. So can you explain to me why we would wait? Um, if this is such a good idea, why would we wait four to five months from now through you, Chairman? Uh, Alex, do, do you want to uh, address that, Alex? She? Yeah, sure, absolutely. Uh, I, I, I think the current plan is now uh, based on, uh, as far as I know, uh, the town is looking to bring this refunding transaction sometime uh, in mid-June. Um, when, when the town decides to enter the market with a bond transaction, it's not as simple as just snapping a finger. Um, there's gonna be a lot of documentation that needs to go back and forth between the town and putting together the, the offering document. In addition, we also need to engage the rating agencies to talk about this plan, as well as uh, in general, get the market ready to, to bid on the uh, to bid on the town's bonds. So it's so it's not a process where, where we can execute it within a couple of days. It usually takes, I would say, anywhere from six to eight weeks at the beginning of the process to when we actually uh, enter the market to lock in these rates. Who you, Chairman? Uh, um, so I, I guess my question is, this is anticipating that we don't do any bonding over the next four months. Otherwise that would change this calculation through you, Chairman. Uh, I, can, I can jump in on that one. Uh, any new money would not hit the next fiscal year. It would hit the year following. That's the way it's sort of structured. Um, so, uh, any refunding that we do, and we have to keep very clear the difference between a refunding and a restructuring. You know, the refunding is just, you know, it's like uh, that can be more closely affiliated with, uh, you know, a, a, a mortgage. You refinance your mortgage through Quicken and you say, I want to keep the same terms. I just want to pay, you know, 4% as opposed to 5%. 0.3% and you just reap the benefit. So that is the refunding that will be coming to you. The restructuring is taking the, um, taking the debt schedule and manipulating it in a way that is most advantageous at the moment that you're doing, which is a slightly more complicated process which involves 
uh, going back to the markets and uh, uh, you know other efforts to pull it off. It can it can cause us um, some some reduction in cost, um, but it takes time. Uh, it takes effort, and it's something that uh, you know our team looks at every day, every week, every month. Uh, I'll just ask one more question through you, uh, uh, Council President, uh, and let my esteemed colleagues uh, ask their questions respectively. Uh, what is so? There has to be a downfall, right? To constantly restructuring. There, you know, if that was the case, everybody would restructure. So my understanding is it affects our bond rating, but maybe uh, y'all can elaborate uh, and explain to me what the potentiality uh, 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 of missteps of constantly restructuring, because to me, it sounds too good to be true. So what are the consequences if we do it the wrong way? Uh, I'm hoping we're not, uh, but I'd like to understand the worst case scenario uh, through you, Chairman, to Mr. Bernardi or Mr. Xi. Sure. Um, so, so again, as, as Mr. Jackson said, um, a, a refinancing, like refinancing a mortgage is all good, is all good because you just loan your interest rate, your savings in every year. But a, a restructuring is taking debt that you would pay, say next year and pushing it out into the future for a future generation to pay. So, so in theory, a restructuring is not as good, if you will, um, as a refinancing. So, so you might say, well, why, why do we do them? Why does the town look at them? And, and, and there's two reasons. In the past, the town has done some restructurings, again, for budget relief. The budget goes up each year, taxes go up each year. By restructuring debt service, it has provided the town some mill rate relief. So that, that's the first reason. Now, the second reason why we're still contemplating these uh, is for one simple reason. Even though it's not, a restructuring again is not the best thing to do, but the reason why we're contemplating is the town's at $22 million a year in debt service is what you're budgeting. It should be at 30 million. So you have two basic options, increase taxes by $8 million, to get to where you should be, or do it on a more gradual basis by $2 million a year. In order to get it on a more gradual basis, we need to do these restructurings to kind of push some debt off so that you could gradually ramp it up. Thank you, Chairman. I'm, I'm just, uh, I'm just gonna say this, not so much uh, for a response, um, but that sounds indicative to me as kicking the can down the road. It sounds like adding uh, a generation of debt to the next generation. Um, and I've always had, I, I know it's common terminology, but I've always had a frustration because it's not refinancing. It, it, it's more, you know, we're not restructuring. It's that we have spent too much money and don't have enough cash flow for our operating budget. Um, so I always get worried because I understand the industry terminology, uh, but to the common lay person, the farmers of the world, it, it sounds confusing to me. So I'm gonna listen to my steam colleagues share their perspective, but this sounds like kicking the can down the road. And I thought we said we weren't kicking the can down the road. Through you, Chair. Thank you, Councilor Farmer. Councilor Horsley. Uh, thank you. So my question is about the specific number that is included in our budget. That's the deficit mitigation plan. That's $2.3 million. How do we, how do we determine that number? How, so we're going to, I'm assuming that's the debt restructure. How do we determine what that precise number is? It is, it's not the debt restructure. Oh, good. Uh, the, no, that is that is a number to ensure um, that we have addressed the deficit from FY twenty twenty. I see. So that is just a plan for 
what we're going to do with the restructuring, but it's the exact number is based on the deficit. Is that right? Yeah, yeah this, this deals solely with um, FY 2020 uh, and our responsibility to clear that in the next fiscal year. Um, the debt or the refinancing what I call the easy one, and hopefully it will be, um, will be coming to you in days. Uh, the debt restructuring is a different animal entirely. Okay. And so the debt restructuring, is that a line in our budget for next year? No, it's uh, it won't, it won't, nothing will hit in the budget that you have before us. It will be part of next year's budget or, or the, the next year's 23. budget. So, not 22. Exactly. I see. Because that will determine what the bottom line for our debt is that we pay for the next budget. Exactly. Exactly. Got it. Got so it. There, there is no action that will be presented, uh, even if it were presented and, and, and acted upon, that will impact the proposed budget before you. And so the, the $2.3 million is a a negative expenditure? That's correct. Uh, to bring, to, to reconcile the 2.3 um, uh, negative in last year's budget. And so does that just decrease the amount we're putting towards the debt by making it a negative expenditure? Yes. Uh, and it now it, this is, sort of the cleanest place that we could put it. It could be anywhere but and it could, could its own line, um, but this seemed to balance out for us. And so we could also put an, a positive expenditure that increased our debt payment by $2.3 million so that we're not reducing the amount of debt uh, payment we're making for next year. Is that right? Uh, that I think that's accurate. I'm gonna I'm gonna pass the baton to Mr. Galarza uh, for okay. confirmation. So, yeah. if I can just maybe restate this and make sure I'm understanding, this negative expenditure is just a way to account for the deficit from last year. But in not having another line that allows us to pay that amount this year, we're reducing our debt payment. Is that a correct statement? I think that's generally correct, except I would I would spread it out beyond the silo of debt service onto the entirety of the operating fund. Got it. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Horsley, Councillor Dolan. Thank um my question mostly has to do with that line too, so perhaps um, it's not for the presentation now that I realize it doesn't have anything to do with the presentation. Um, so I, I guess I would just have one question about the presentation then. And um, since it's advantageous of us to get closer to the $30 million sooner rather than later, um, it seems silly to put this $2.3 million negative spending money here. Um, shouldn't, we, shouldn't we let this natural debt service number be closer to the $24.5 million it would be without this line item so that we're on our way to getting closer to the $30 million? It, it, just, it just seems like that, that negative $2.3 million expense shouldn't be part of this debt service conversation. Mr. Galarza, do you want to handle that one? Can everyone hear me? Yes. Can you hear me now? Yes, you can hear you. Yeah, hi, hi, Councilwoman Dolan. How are you doing? Good evening, Council members, Council President. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I understanding your point, that if you look at the department's request 
uh, it was around 24, uh, you know, with, with the inclusion of the 2.3, you drop your debt service payment by 2.3. And, you know, we earmark the loss uh, of 1920, and we're trying to capture how we're, how we're covering that loss uh, in, in 1920. So what it, it does, do, it, it, does, it does reduce your debt service payment for the ensuing fiscal year by having that line in there. And uh, like Alex, the, 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 the challenge that we're having, and we talked about it several meetings, is that since the third, uh, the third or the second phase, uh, we're gonna be discussing like the second phase shortly with the refinancing, but the third phase of the deficit mitigation plan, since that hasn't been brought to council and finalized, you can we can remodel it then to recapture that. We also have uh, some unknowns with what we're going to receive from the federal government. So if we exceed six million dollars, we can offset some of that two point three, and also uh, with what the board receives. You know, so. It, there's some unknowns there. So, uh, you know, at the time we didn't really have definite uh, numbers. Uh, we still don't have definite numbers. The mayor wanted to put that as an option to reduce uh, the budget. Uh, but like Councilwoman Horsley said, if, if we want to take that out or make it a positive, that's, that's a council decision. The mayor figured that he'll have in other places enough to cover that 2.3, but it's just not for sure right now. Uh, thank you, Mr. Galarza. Um, so I, I guess my comment to my colleagues would be, yeah, when, when we go to deliberate on this budget, it seems to me that we should not balance our budget based on this one-time savings based on a deficit that we had last year. Um, you know, it's very artificial. And so I think we should look for those savings elsewhere in the budget because we know we are already um, have an artificially low debt service payment. Um, thank you. That's thank you, Councillor Dolan. Questions from other folks? Oh, just a moment, please. Uh, okay. Mr. Alston will be joining us. Councillor Bondes, was that a, a hand? Yes, please. Thank you. I know I spoke once before. I just want to get a better idea about the timeline of these of the restructures, um, because you know, in the in the beginning, the front of the budget, we do have a forecast of um, the next three years ahead of us and um, the deficits that are likely to uh, occur in years 22, 23, and 24. Um, so. I'd like to know how that plays into this restructure plan and, and what the timing is. If you could just lay out the timing better. I, I get the idea of what you're doing and why, um, but I'd like to get a better idea of the timeline. Uh, Mr. Galarza, correct so, me if I'm Yeah, you want me? Sure. I'll be more than happy to uh, explain that to Councilwoman Bonadis and, and the rest of the council members. So, if, if we if, if we put a calendar in front of us, so within the next couple of weeks, we're, you're going to receive a restructuring. They call it refunding. Uh, to council farmers' uh, point, you know, layman's term, we're going to refinance. We're going to take current existing principal, and we're going to refinance the interest. That's going to happen in the spring. After that, we're going to talk about the capital plan. I think uh, Mr. Bernard is going to address, speak to this further in the plan. I believe we have somewhere between, you know, eight to ten million dollars built into the in, into the deficit mitigation plan to cover new monies. Uh, so the next the next the next phase would be, you know, uh, the administration coming to the council, talking about operating costs getting an understanding of uh, what the ask is and then getting councils feel on how much they want to appropriate based on the need. That'll take us through, you know, early summer, come August, we'll go to the market. We'll go out and, uh, and you know, uh, we'll, we'll speak to the rating agencies and, and hopefully uh, not to say that we're stalling, but since there's a lot of unknowns, like I was alluding to Councilwoman Dolan, it's not only internal, uh, folks that we, you know, we're, we want to answer these questions to. We also have to, we have the responsibility and the fiduciary 
responsibility to, to, to address the rating agencies of how the town is doing. So it's hard to have those conversations and, and request funding from, from Wall Street if we don't know as of yet how we're doing financially because of the outstanding income that we're, we're anticipating from the federal government. So going forward, that'll bring us into the fall. Uh, we probably, we don't do much in the fall. Uh, we'll build the mayor's budget uh, around January and then around spring, around sooner than this time, but close to this time uh, in calendar year 22, we'll talk about the last leg or the second phase of the deficit mitigation restructure at that time, we'll have a, a better position on our on our ratings. Uh, we could talk to the rating agencies. We'll know what's come in. We'll know where we stand, and that would really uh, seal the deal with the original deficit mitigation plan that the council approved last fiscal year around this time. So, and and then and then, uh, you know, if if what we we're hoping occurs with the schools being set with their projects, the town will get induced with a, a decent size of capital projects that they haven't, you know, we haven't gone out to bond for, for, their, for their needs in the last couple of years, then we can, we can model in a capital plan with the operating plan that's, that, that are be, both be manageable during the same time, because it's really challenging to, to have two budget deliberations on capital and operating. And, and then that should take us into fiscal year, you know, 22, 23. That's, that's how we're forecasting the next, you know, the next 12 months, but it, but it really would affect 24 months because council's decisions that are made around June or when we address the actual capital, we will have to include that in the budget for fiscal year 22, 23. Is that pretty good of us to, how we want to handle capital in the next 12 years and how 12 months, pardon me, and how it's going to affect the next uh, 24 months with uh, paying for it. And then we're going to have to remodel the debt service plan. I, I think that Barry Bonabi just was trying to explain how, you know, we, we should be taking a two, $2 million steps increase up to the 30. And, and just to Councilman Farber's point is that, Normally, you reach your peak, and then you know your debt service cart starts coming down. The model that council approved was to plateau probably a little bit longer than normal, uh, and, and that'll put us in a more favorable favorable position because other other expenditure items that we've been working hard to get to 100%, we would be at 100%. And there's one more component, which would be our POBs, right, our pension obligation bonds, that due to the market and the interest rates, we'll come back to council and have probably, you know, in the fall, begin to have that process, uh, unless Barry, you know, Barry, you feel differently on timing, but just to get council engaged in, 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 into the POB. So I think for the, we'll be talking about that, you know, the next three or four months, uh, for the next 12 months, and you'll see how we'll need approvals in the next 24 months. Barry, is that is that fair as far as the timeline that council can understand and and, and figure out, you know, when they when we need their their authority to to make these decisions? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, uh, Rick. The um, <clears throat> you know we often talk about <clears throat> refinancing debt like refinancing a mortgage, but it's a little bit more complicated than that. The the when a town issues a bond issue. There's what we call a call date, a date out in the future where you have the ability to refinance those bonds. It doesn't mean you have to, but you have the option to do it. So, so um, the timing on a lot of these refinancings and restructurings are really dependent on when that call date is. So maybe Alex, she just briefly, if you could touch on uh, how important that is waiting to those call dates. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so as Barry mentioned, you know, a lot of times when municipalities execute these type of refunding for savings, it's essentially a, a business decision because at the time when you do the refunding, you're not quite sure in the future whether interest rates will be higher or lower. So you're making, you're utilizing all the information you have at that point in time to make an informed decision about, hey, are these savings attractive enough for us to enter the market? And, uh, and Barry and myself, we've been following the, the we have the, a detailed uh, analysis 
of all the towns of the town's outstanding debt. And we can identify timings of when these bonds will be attracted to refinance. And as, uh, as Rick mentioned earlier, over these next uh, uh, 12 to 24 to 36 months, you will have additional refinancing opportunities where you can hopefully take advantage of the market and capture some, um, some uh, uh, significant savings to help you uh, manage your, your budgetary flexibility. Uh, you're muted, uh, Councilor Bobby. I was going to ask for a flow chart because that was great information. I'd like to keep an eye on when it's all happening and um, if that's available, if we have that kind of an outline, that would be great for us to be able to know what's upcoming and really keep an eye on our budget so that um, we're gonna deliver a budget similar to um, last year where we're really keeping an eye on, on spending. Um, so if that, if, that is, if that type of information or um, flow yep. is available, I'd love to have it. For yeah, we can put that, to, just, just, just uh, it's Rick again. Yeah, Councilwoman Biden, that's fine. Just keep in mind that the, uh, working with Councilwoman Horsley, she, she requested something like that through the Fiscal Stability Committee. She wanted Perfect. to know the timeline. And uh, we, we said we'll prepare it for her. So we, uh, through the, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll make sure that uh, as these opportunities come up, because that's what they are, they're opportunities to save or to re, re look at our, our, our options with our debt, whether it's, you know, town capital or the, the pension, uh, uh, pension bonds. We'll definitely, uh, you know, keep keep council appraised, and we, we you know, we're we're doing that for our own forecast purposes. So we'll be more than happy to share it with the legislative body as well. Not a problem. Great, thank you. Thank you, Council Bondies. Uh, I put on a couple questions, put myself on the list for a couple questions here. Uh, I guess the first question I have uh, for our a financial advisor and perhaps our bond council. So the, the practice that we are doing of, uh, you know, both the refinance and the restructuring, how common is it for municipalities to engage in these sort of things? Like you mentioned the call dates. You know, how often do municipalities wait for those call dates and then do a refinance or restructure when those call dates come up? Dave Panico, do you want to... Sure. I mean, um, for refundings, which just result in debt service savings, uh, those happen all the time. And obviously, as interest rates uh, have moved down uh, in the last five years, um, mo many of our clients have executed refundings. Uh, in, in some instances, um, municipalities, when you have savings, they take the savings over the entire term of the issue. Uh, so for example, if there's $2 million of savings, uh, you know, over a remaining 10 years, the town would put two, you know, $200,000 in each fiscal year. Um, a lot of our municipalities just take those savings in the next, you know, couple budget years, one year, two year, three years, because, you know, everyone's been hit with, you know, COVID, uh, reduced state grant monies, um, you know, additional expenses for pensions, et cetera. So a lot of the municipalities have taken those savings in the next couple fiscal years. Uh, you are not alone in, in doing restructurings. You know, restructurings actually have savings in the next couple of years and uh, additional debt service out in the out years. Um, and you, you guys are not alone in executing those either. New Haven has done those. Several, several other of our municipalities have done those as well. Um, so it, it's the whole gamut. But the reason you can do those is because really debts, you know, interest rates have come down in the last five years. Thank you. Um, the other question I have then, it certainly sounds like, you know, in, in a little bit, we are going to, uh, after everyone has had plenty of time to ask all the questions I have of our team here, 
uh, you know, we'll be making a motion or I'll be asking for a motion to approve the debt service request. And it certainly sounds like there's going to be some interest about the deficit mitigation plan line. Um, is there a recommendation from the finance team about what to do with that line? Is there, you know, would you recommend removing it? Would you, is there a rec to uh, leave it alone? What would be the recommendation of the finance team for that line? Uh, I don't know if by finance team you mean the finance department or the total team. Um, uh, all you guys. <laughs> all y'alls. Uh, yeah. I think it's important for us to, uh, as part of our um, strategy, to legitimize ourselves in the eyes of the state of Connecticut. I think it is important to... Um, live up to the uh, uh, to the uh, uh, the items in Connecticut general statutes that pertain to the managing of a deficit. And so that's what this line is. That's the line that we can point to. Now that being said, does it have to be that line? No. But I do think that somewhere within this budget, it is important to recognize last year's deficit and address it in this budget. What, what would that look like somewhere else? Uh, and this is where the statutes start to conflict a little bit. Uh, the statutes uh, indicate that you can't just overtax for any reason. You can't just, you know, increase your expense lines. The reason that this is the most elegant solution, in my opinion, is that it addresses that deficit in a way that we can point to, you know, the next time we go to the MFAC or when OPM comes knocking on our door and says, well, you had a budget, you had a deficit last year. What'd you do about it? I get to point to this line and they go away. Okay. I mean, so you, I mean, it, it, it really is, I, I mean, obviously it's in your hands. This is your budget now. Um, it would be helpful to the finance department to be able to have a place to point to in the final budget uh, that we can show to the state of Connecticut. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Dolan. Thank you. So I am not trying to beat this to death. I just, I'm a little bit thick about it. I'm sorry. But if you're gonna point to this line item, I don't understand. You're, it's a deficit from a prior year. It is not any kind of cost savings. So if it says deficit mitigation plan, what is the plan? How do you get $2.3 million of savings on this line item? I'm so confused. Uh, that goes back to the original plan. This is a reduction in debt service. It absolutely is. For the so you're gonna pay less money. So our debt service is $24 million and we just get to choose to pay 21.9 million. Uh, I always thought our debt service was locked in number and the debt service is the debt service. You don't touch it. Um, you can't just pay less because that's your debt service. Yep, the debt service is the debt service. We, uh, in our OS from June 2020, indicated that we would do 24. That is true. This budget is 22. And the difference is that because it is, you know, what when you're, when you're trying to serve a bunch of different masters, you get hung up. We are going to end up with close to $20 million in fund balance uh, based upon the plan that this council 
uh, uh, approved with the support of the mayor and the support of uh, this finance department. So just based upon all things, we made the determination in this proposed budget that the animal that we needed to address right now, right now, this instant in this budget was providing to the state of Connecticut evidence that we were addressing last year's deficit. And so that's why this is right here, right now, and at this, at this level. So how are we addressing? What is it that you're doing to save $2.3 million to pay off that deficit? We are reducing what would have been in the budget for debt service. And so I mean, you can, you can save money a couple of different ways, right? One is you, you take the money and put it in your pocket. The other is you don't spend it. And so this is a don't spend it response. Yeah, but it's debt service. You can't choose to not pay your debt service. Off. Are are we are we going to violate any covenants on the debt? Is there is there absolutely, special? Absolutely, absolutely yeah. Did did someone call us and say, "Hey, you guys can take a month off and you don't have to pay that debt"? I'm I, I'm really not trying to give you a hard time. I, I'm just trying to understand how we can choose to not pay two point three million of our debt. That's all. I, I'm just trying to understand if it's true savings or if it's, you know, I just don't understand that it says deficit mitigation plan, but, and we're going to point to it, but, but what's the plan? Isn't it right. the restructure yeah. savings? It's, yeah. No, they specifically it's, said it's not. It's, uh, it's not. Um, I think Barnabe was trying to say something. Okay. I'll, I'll try. Um, so so re remember, let's take a step back. Um, the town has done some debt restructurings in the past to artificially lower your debt service. Um, that by itself, frankly, is not looked upon in a favorable manner because you lower debt service and it helps other areas of the budget. So, so, so what we did to mitigate that is the $22 million of debt service that's budgeted for next year, you, you don't need all of that. The actual debt service is actually gonna be lower than that. And the difference between the 22 million and the actual level of debt service is gonna fall into fund balance. And the town's gonna to start to, uh, that, that, that surplus in debt service will help fix the deficit in the fund balance and over time to grow the fund balance up to 15 million, 16 million, 17 million. So, so, so when Mr. Jackson, uh, when you were saying, I'm sorry, council person, the, the, um, the, the debt service at budget at 22 million is actually higher than the actual debt service. So, 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 so the challenge is this, that, 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 that's one component. Now you might say, well, why are we budgeting more than our debt service? And, and be, because we artificially pushed it down and this plan will fix the deficit, it, it, cre it, it, it creates an automatic surplus for the town, which the town has been unable to generate over the last several years, frankly, over a long period of time. So, so, so you, you will have enough money to pay debt service, but you have to balance that with, with the need um, to actually increase your debt service more. It's actually higher than you need now. But, but some people could say, well, it should actually be higher than what you're budgeting. And, and that argument is because we have to get to $30 million at some point. The town has to find, you have to find the right balance between increasing your debt service budget and, and, and keeping your mill rate manageable and getting to $30 million. So keeping it at 22 million will be more than sufficient it will lead to a, a, a surplus in the debt service line item, and hopefully will fall right into fund balance as long as there's no other deficit in, in the operating budget. Um, so, so does that help? 
Thank you, Mr. Bernabe. Um, I'm going to let other folks talk, but um, it doesn't help me. Um, I am still find it very confusing. And I would think that if the goal was to let the um, savings fall to fund balance, then we wouldn't be balancing our budget using this number. We would take this number out and balance the budget without it. And then it would be in, it would automatically fall to the, to the general fund. Similar to what we did in the spring where we wanted to structure the debt. And so we had the $7 million of savings that we were budgeting for that we wanted to fall directly to fund balance. But instead, what's happening is it's getting eaten up in the budget. So I would much rather see this outside of our budget. I still want to do it all. I think, I think it all makes sense, but I don't think it should be a line item in the budget. But I've taken everybody's time. Thank you very much. I will pass the conversation along. Thank you, Councilor Dolan. I'm going to make another way. Just, I'm just not sure how we... There has to be a line item in the budget uh, somehow, right? I don't, I'm not sure about... Let me, uh, Mr. Austin's had his hand up, uh, Councillor Austin. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I was following along with uh, Councilwoman Dolan's uh, line of question as well, and I have the same thoughts, but with the last speaker, I understand. So I have the initial budget in front of me, and that number says 21.9. Is that the number that we're all still looking at? The bottom line? Yes. 21.9, right? Yeah. So that is, if we take out the $23, $22.3 million negative that we have in here, the real number is 24.2, right? So, and you're saying that that's really not our debt service. So what is the real balance for our debt service? Um, the, the real balance for debt service uh, is $17.5 million. 17.5. Now, again, remember, we artificially push that down to, to that. It should be at 30 million. So by, by budgeting 22 million, that difference between those two amounts should be a transformative, should generate a, a sizable surplus and replenish the town's fund balance. Mm -hmm. Where we, like I said, hopefully over the next couple of years, get up to 15 million plus in fund balance to where the town Mr. should be. Often, Mr. Bernabe, do you mind if I interrupt for one second so I can slow this down just a little bit? Um, the, it, with your indulgence, Mr. Austin? Sure. So the number that we have to pay for debt service is actually 17 million? 17.5. Nope. 17.5, thank you. So that, so the 21 is more than we had to mm -hmm. or, or required to. Yes. Thank you. Mr. Alston, thank you very much for that line of questioning. I think that, that help out a lot. And you mentioned a 30, that's a new number for me. Can you explain what the 30 actually is? You said that you've artificially pushed it down. I'm assuming that's through some type of restructure and you pushed payments out into the future, that that's where the 30 is coming from. Th that's correct. The, right? the capital <laughs> projects that the town has approved over the last several years um, justifies a, a debt service of approximately $30 million. Mm -hmm. What we did is, as you said, is correct. The, the town has done some debt restructurings. Um, we use the term kick the can. We, we took debt service out in the early years. We pushed it out. We pushed debt service down, again, to provide the town some budget flexibility. Uh, absolutely. Okay. So is there, I, assuming not, I'm not been a part of the past, is there a reason why we don't present this as a surplus budget instead of putting it in? and presenting it as a balanced budget? Because I think that maybe that's not to the, the, the advisors, but to the, the, the administration. Um, just a quick topic on, on that. I mean, the, the town has a negative fund balance now, mm -hmm. which, which is, is frankly very bad. So, so when we talked to the rating agencies last year, we said, well, whoa, don't, don't, we, we have a plan. The town has a plan. They go, well, 
well, wh what's your plan? You, you, you haven't been able to generate surpluses, uh, sizable surpluses at, at any point in time. I said, but, but, but we, we have a, a, a different plan. We, we're, we're doing the debt restructurings, not just for budget relief. We're doing the debt restructurings to build in, as you say, a, a automatic surplus, hopefully, mm -hmm. uh, to, to force a surplus to two things, get your fund balance positive again and to grow. Now, I understand that, but I'm just wondering if on the face of it, it looks like we're de delivering a, deliberating over a balanced budget when it's not. We have a surplus that's built in that I've been looking for since we started this, how are we going to pay for the deficit that we had last year? But it's already built in. I, I would say that that is an accurate statement because but, otherwise, absent last year's deficit, uh, this budget would look slightly different and that negative 2.3 would not exist. That's an accurate statement. It's taken some, I guess, some conversation to get me to this point, but are there any other things that are in here that don't present exactly what they are? Because that's what this is. This doesn't present exactly what it is. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's a deficit mitigation plan. Um, it, I don't, I can't, I can't think of any, there are, frankly, uh, colleagues, there are very few um, lines that on their own are material. This is one of them. Okay. Yep. Maybe I can also chime in. So yeah, so your actual debt service a schedule to be made for next year is is the 17.5 million. And as um, Scott indicated earlier, there is an obligation under the Connecticut statutes that not only you should you balance, you know, balance and budget for your actual expenses and your actual revenues. But if you have a deficit uh, in the prior year, you're supposed to, you're supposed to actually tax and budget for that as well to bring you back to make up for that deficit. And, and the actual, to go out about it the other way, you, your actual operating deficit in 2020 was 4.3 million. Um, which resulted in a negative fund balance of 2.3 million, okay? So if you take the $17.5 million debt service line item, and you add to that the 4.3 million operating deficit in 2020, that gets you to your, your $22 million or so number. Now you could divide it into a debt service number of 17.5 and an operating loss uh, line item of you know 4.3, uh, or you could just put it at 22 million. But either way, as Scott indicated, you want to be able to point the state of Connecticut and all these other boards that are keeping an eye on you. Uh, that you've actually budgeted for your op the operating deficit you incurred in 2020. I thank you. I understand that, but my question would be to the administrator: Is there a reason why we do it this way versus presenting it as a surplus budget that's not going to be surplus because there is a payment due on prior year's deficit? Uh, I think that that is exactly what we are doing right now. We're going line by line and talking about what is in the budget. And so when, you know, you see this line that has never been there before, deficit mitigation plan, what does that mean? And so I, I, I think, I, I, I think that's, uh, that is the presentation that we are making in this instant.
Uh, Mr. Charleston, further questions? I understand what's being done, but I feel that this could be presented another way if we didn't present as a 22 mark for our debt, if we presented 17, there would be a budget surplus in the presentation of this and we could present it as a payment for prior year. I understand what's happening here now. Um, if Councilwoman Dolan, I understand Councilwoman Dolan's perception of this if, and, and, and if anybody else feels the same. That's all I have. Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Councilor Austin. Uh, Councilor Bonadies. Thank you. Um, so my understanding of this, I know we I've asked if this is debt restructure savings, why we're able to pay 17 and a half when really we should be paying 30, but we're really only supposed to be paying 17 because we restructured. So it's restructure savings. It's allowing us to, to save that money we would have paid to debt service and put it towards deficit. So why are we not calling it that? Why can't we just call it restructure savings? It, you're making it more convoluted or am I just simplifying this too much? I mean, we wouldn't have that money to to even pretend we're gonna pay 22. We, we decided we were gonna put in 22, even though we didn't have to pay 22 because that was gonna get some money there so that at the end of the year, it would drop down and it would take care of deficits or if there was no deficit, it would go into uh, our fund balance. So this deficit from fiscal year 2020 is being covered by the debt restructure we did a year ago. I don't understand why we don't call it what it is. That's um, all. Okay, uh, thank you. And uh, Councilor Dolan. Thanks so much. Um, so I'm thrilled to hear that our debt service payments are actually 17 million because I always go by 30 million because that's what is in the audit report. So if you look at the audit report, page 33, the auditor lists out our annual debt service payments. And he does that for the next, um, well, he does it year by year for five years. And then he does it all the way through to 2045 based on um, generally accepted audit principles. So when you look at those numbers, they are up in the you know, 21 to $28 million range reflective of this budget. They're not at 17 million. So I think that there is some confusion and probably some very honest confusion about what our debt service truly is and how it should be presented. And um, you know, I, I think it's a really big number and I think it's a really important concept and perhaps we should, instead of trying to vote on this tonight, perhaps we should come up with a list of questions and maybe revisit it. I do hate tabling things because I know we need to make progress, but this one seems to have a lot of us scratching our head. Um, and I would like to do further research on it. And I, and I would like to direct the finance team to the audit report to look at those um, annual debt service payments that the auditor seems to think we have to make. And that we all thought we had to make too because they were always in our projections. Just, just one comment on that. I, I think those debt service payments reflected in your 2020 audit report were as of June 30th of 2020. Um, subsequent to June 30th, the town did a debt re, um, refinancing restructuring, which changed all those amounts after that audit was completed. For clarity's sake, Mr. Brianavi, so the number on the number that Ms. Dolan's referring to in the audit has changed. Right, because like I said, that, that audit is as of June 30th, 2020. Subsequent to that audit, um, a lot has happened. 
the debt has been restructured and new bonds have been issued. So, so it's already outdated. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Dolan, did you want to follow up on that? Um, no, I will let conversation continue and I'll make a motion once everyone had a chance to talk. Thanks. Okay. I, uh, thank you, uh, Councilwoman. I know that uh, Mr. Bernabe specifically has a hard stop for another community uh, in a couple of minutes. So if uh, there are any questions for him, they may very well be directed right now. Uh, so, uh, Councilors Horsley and Farmer, does anyone, anything for Mr. Bernabe, anyone else? Uh, Horsley? Yeah, so I think what I would like us to do is to um, increase one of these lines as an expenditure to cover that deficit. So we're paying more into our debt. So I'm curious what line we should add $2.3 million to to help us pay more into our debt service. Well, I think what Mr. Panico said before, you, you, you have the option, I guess, to budget debt service for what it truly is and then create another line item. I'm not sure what, what exactly you call it, uh, um, a deficit replenishment line item, a, uh, a uh, um, yeah. you know, of, of, of a different amount to just to break the, the, the components out between actual debt service and, and deficit replenishment, I guess. So, I see. But it's my understanding that we need to have this negative expenditure because it's a, a deficit from a previous year. And so if I understand Director Jackson, we need this line to tell the state, and I trust his experience with the state that he knows how to tell the state that we're doing what we need to do. But I guess what I'd like to see is that we don't actually reduce our debt service by $2.3 million. And so what I'd like to see is that we put in that money somewhere else. And what I'm asking is, do we just add a new line or do we put it into an existing line if we wanted to do that? Do you mean keeping the negative 2.3 and adding 2.3 back in somewhere else? Correct. Correct. I don't. I don't know if it's going to pass muster. Okay. To uh, put it into any of the existing um, accounts in this item. Um, So perhaps we could create a new new line. A new line that is um, not likely to be spent. And so here's a, you know, here's a thought. And you know, Rick is going to punch me in the face tomorrow. <laughs> you could put it in the ENC. I mean, at the end of the well, day, the okay. line balance. Uh, there is no statutory requirement that I am familiar with that says how much emergency and contingency you may hold. So we get our line that we get to point to the state and say that's where it is. So thank you very much for coming down. Um, the funds are in the budget. Uh, it is a fully balanced budget. Mm. I don't know. I guess I'd just like it to go to debt payments. And so that's why I was asking how to best do that. But well, it's I mean, and, and it's also in, and uh, attorney Panico uh, can probably opine on this. Um, prepaying debt can be challenging. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I mean, you. I think the town does have a, a debt service fund, which uh, doesn't lapse each fiscal year. But yeah, I don't. I don't think that's a. Um, I don't think I've ever seen that done before. Um, okay. Thank you. Uh, 
Uh, thank you, Councillor Horsley. Councillor Farmer. Thank you, Council President. Through you, uh, Mr. Panico, um, it, is it possible to send a document or something to just explain the different restructurings we've done and what we need to do to stay on task for them? Um, because if this is coming up in, in a couple of months from now, I think that'd be a helpful document to kind of get a better perspective of where we fell short in the past and what it would look like to make sure for us to keep on track in the future. So through you, I'm not sure if that makes sense, um, but if it does, through you, Council President, uh, and thank you all for your time tonight. Thank you, Councilor Farmer. Um, further questions for our, our finance team, especially Mr. Bernabe, who I understand has to, uh, will have to um, leave us relatively sh shortly. Okay, is there anything else? Uh, we will, we have not yet moved our debt service line, so we'll be doing that relatively soon. Um, is there anything else from uh, the finance team you guys would like to say uh, before we start up that process? Because I'm sure we'll have some more questions for you. Uh, but is there anything else you'd like to uh, communicate prior to us starting that? No, sir. Okay. Um, in that case, one last time, any other questions from any uh, council members for our finance team? I'm sure we'll have some more once uh, once we get started. Uh, so I would like to, uh, and Mr. Benavi, do you have to leave, sir, or do you have a couple more minutes? Or? I, I I do. I have a, another um, uh, meeting in a couple minutes. So uh, I, I thank you for your time. Hopefully, I, I was clear in ex explaining that. Um, but um, I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you, sir. All right. Good night. Uh, uh, I'd like to. <laughs> Entertain a motion to approve the mayor's debt service line. May I have a motion? So moved. I'll, move. I'll second. So moved by Councilor Horsley, uh, seconded by Councilor McDowell. Uh, discussion. Councilor Dolan. Um, I'd like to make a motion to table this line item until we can discuss it further. Second. All right, there is no discussion on a motion to table. Uh, all in favor of tabling uh, the debt service line, please indicate by saying or showing aye. 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 We're still remaining, you're still counting. Yeah, I am. Can we do a roll call, please? Uh, certainly. I have a really bad headache. I can't even. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. okay um, Mr. Alston. Aye. Miss Baez. Yes. Miss Bonadies? Yes. Uh, Miss Dolan? Yes. Mr. Farmer? Yes. Miss Horsley? No. Mr. McDowell? Yes, to table. Mr. McGarry? No. Uh, for Lewis? No. Ms. Shoemaker? No. Mr. Weber? Yes. Ms. Wetmore? Yes. <clears throat> All right, and I believe everybody else is absent. One, two. 
Eight yes, four no, it passes. All right, the item is tabled. I don't know if we'll be able to assemble this team <laughs> tonight for another night. Um, so any questions, I guess you'll please uh, submit um, and we'll have to send them to Mr. Shee and Mr. Panico. Uh, but I don't know, Mr. Jack, maybe we can assemble the team for a future date at some point, maybe? Uh, we can certainly uh, uh, make every effort. Uh, these are uh, professionals who work in the billions, not the millions. They know what they're doing. They know what they're talking about. Uh, and I have a lot of confidence in them. Uh, thank you. So, uh, well, we'll just have to, well, I guess I would encourage as I have been uh, most meetings, please folks send in your questions. Uh, we'll have to find some time towards the end of the process. We have a couple nights that are not yet filled up. So that'll probably be the night that we'll move this item to. I'll try to pick a, get a night as possible so we can know, uh, but please send in your questions um, and then we'll be directed to uh, the appropriate folks, either Mr. She or Mr. Panico or Mr. Bernabe. Uh, and uh, we'll try to work through that. Uh, Councilor Horsley. Um, I just have an informational question. We pay for these professionals to be here tonight, correct? That's correct. So taxpayers are paying for them to be here and they will in the future meetings, correct? Uh, that's correct. Perhaps okay. we well, well, they, I mean, they're, they're, you know, they're contracted to provide a, a, a book of service. I see. So it's not, a, it's not an hourly rate. Okay, that's good to know. Yeah. Um, so I'd like to make a motion to create a new line for debt service that's $2.3 million. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Councilor Horsley, it's, it's uh, tabled. I th we tabled that line, not the entire expenditures, correct? Uh, Council Dolan, can you clarify what it is you, uh, you specifically asked to table? Um, I believe I tabled that um, the debt service discussion that was my intention on the second as well, was the entire. Now, it's my understanding that the debt service in its entirety was tabled. Okay, uh, yeah. never mind. Yeah, I did that because I just wanted to confirm what the true debt service number is, and then we can follow your guide and, and find a, a, a placeholder for it. I, I understood it was the line, so I, I withdraw my motion. Thank you. All right. Um, the, Mr. Uh, Mr. Jackson, for uh, our pension in IT, do we will we need Mr. Panico or Mr. Uh, Shee for those discussions? No, no, they can uh, uh, they can go be with their families. Uh, gentlemen, thank, thank you, you so much, everyone. Okay, thank you, and good evening. Point of clarification, Mr. Farmer. Thank you, uh, uh, President. Um, I, I just realized I never got through you. I never got an answer from Mr. Panico or any of his associates on my request. So I was just wondering if they understood my request. Uh, why, and if why don't you repeat that so we're all clear on what exactly it is you're asking for. And I'm gonna make a quick ruling right now that you're asking about the presentation, not towards the discussion on debt service, so it's okay. Thank you, I, I appreciate that uh, um, distinction through you, Council President. Um, uh, if we can get what our plan was for the other restructurings before the next conversation about restructuring comes to us. So the next conversation is supposed to be four months from now. So if we can get what our restructuring plans were, the two or three, the two previous ones and what our plan was. And if you can get that documentation to us, that'd be deeply appreciated through you, Chairman. Thank you. Yes, I can work with uh, uh, your financial advisor, Barry Bernabe, to put that together so that you will have that information. Thank you, and y'all have a nice night. Through you, Thank Chair. you so much. Have a wonderful evening, everyone. Thank you, Mr. Shee. Thank you, Mr. Panico. All right, our next uh, item is information technology. Uh, Mr. McDowell, uh, you are leading the, the charge on this one. 
Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I'd like to, we're, we've switched it now. We're doing salaries before expenses. Is that, is that how we've been proceeding? Uh, yes. Okay. I would like to entertain a motion to accept the mayor's proposals for uh, IT uh, uh, salaries. Second. I'm sorry, that was moved by council from the fifth district, second by councilwoman from the fourth. Yes. Correct. Thank you. All right. Uh, discussion. Uh, council from the fifth district. Thank you. Uh, through you, Chairman. Um, uh, Director Jackson, um, there was a from my understanding, did we fill the position in IT already? No, no, we have not. Okay, so if that happens uh, through you, Chairman, that position will go to the Fiscal Stability Committee first, and we will be notified before that position is filled through you, Chairman. I'm sorry, my audio cut out. If you could, I had a little bit connectivity issues there. I, I was saying uh, that if this position is filled, it would have to go not only through civil service, but through the fiscal stability committee. I do believe Am that's I, correct. Uh, Council from the fourth, do you have a, a response to that? Yeah, so the fiscal stability committee is not an approval stop. It is not intended to be a stop in which a hiring is stalled. It's more an informational process by which the information that was emailed to you today uh, is shown to us to make sure that it's clear and transparent who the town is hiring and why. Um, and so it will not be approved as, as such, but communicated. Is that clear? Yes. So it's more of a, a, a point of information than it is an item of discussion or, or vote. Correct. Okay. Uh, Council from the fifth, did you have uh, anything more? Just a, a follow up. Thank you, Chairman. Um, so uh, just a point of clarification uh, to the counselor from the fourth. So does that mean that a department can hire someone? or actively go through the hiring process and then send the name to us after that? Or does that mean once they start a, a application and put it out there that we are notified at that point through you, Chairman? Thank you. Thank you, Council. Uh, Council from the fourth? Um, yes, so it's um, informational information that's passed on to the Fiscal Stability Committee um, at the beginning of the hiring process. So personnel does not start the process until that form is completed. And then that form is sent to me as chair of the fiscal stability committee. And I share it with the rest of the committee and, um, and uh, discuss it at our meetings. Thank you, uh, through you, Chairman. Uh, Council from the fifth, did you have uh, anything ad uh, additional? No, not at this time. Thank you. Is there any further discussion on the mayor's proposed uh, salaries for the IT department? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye or indicating on your screen. Aye. Aye. Is there aye. anyone opposed? Is there anyone in abstention? Seeing none, uh, the, the uh, salaries passed unanimously and we'll move on to expenditures. I'll entertain a motion to accept the mayor's proposed expenditures for the IT department. So moved. So moved, second. second. Moved by Mr. Uh, President, seconded by council from the fifth district. Uh, discussion. Any discussion on the IT department's expenditures? Seeing none, I will move to vote. Uh, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye or indicating on your screen. Aye. Is anyone opposed? 
Are there any abstentions? Seeing none, uh, the mayor's proposed uh, expenditures for the IT department pass unanimously and I'll pass it back to you, Mr. President. Thank you very much, Councilor McDowell. Our next and last item uh, is pension uh, and Councilor Horsley uh, will be leading us on this one. Uh, page 121 in the book, if you're looking at it. Hey, thank you. Um, I'll entertain a motion for the pension expenditures. So moved. moved. Second. Is there any discussion? Ms. Councillor McGarry. Uh, thank you. I know nobody gets excited anymore when we say that there's 100% funded but it really does make me feel good uh, since it's been a goal for like, you know, a long time since I got on council, which has been trying to get to this moment in time. And, you know, it just makes me happy. And I just wanted to say that. Point well taken. Um, Councilor at large McDowell. Thank you. Uh, it I wanted to briefly, uh, Director Jackson, if you don't mind, I know there's been a lot of controversy over pensions, specifically payout of pensions, um, and how we plan on remedying that. Um, if you could give us a broad overview of what we've done over the last year, uh, you know, what were the errors, what has been done to correct them, and what are we doing to ensure that moving forward, we're, we're moving ahead appropriately. I was hoping you could just give us sort of a background to that because I think just, just as important as making sure that our pensions are funded 100% is to make sure that, you know, we are, we are also uh, paying pensions appropriately, you know, both respectfully to taxpayers and not overpaying pensions, but also res respectfully to, to, to uh, our retirees and, and honoring the promises that we made to them when they, when they, you know, gave their career and service to the town. Um, so would you mind sort of covering that broadly for us? Is that something you can do? Yeah, certainly. And that's a, it's a, you know, it could be a two hour conversation, but I'm not going to subject you to that. Um, in the late seventies, early eighties, inflation was off the charts. And so the determination was made to, um, to cap at 3%, but give each individual a bank. So let's say inflation was actually 7% in any given year. Then you get your three, but you bank seven for a time when inflation drops below three, and then you get up to three. Um, so it's very complicated, very convoluted. Um, there are very few individuals with banks because you would really have had to retire before like 84, 85. Um, uh, and so that is a, that is a, a, a legal item outstanding, uh, which prohibits me from saying too much about it. Um, but I can certainly say that uh, since 2013, it was initiated in 2012, but started in 2013, we were just, we were just given 3% to everybody because of these lingering banks. And it didn't make sense. Didn't make sense to me. Um, and so we, um, you know, the pensioner attorney and I and, and some other folks, uh, Mr. Kelly, um, we, we all agreed that it was not being appropriately um, applied. And so we stopped it. Uh, and that's been the case since uh, May of 2013. Uh, and uh, it will continue to apply into the future because that is exactly what the pension plan says. Now, we might have to clean some stuff up in the ordinance because the ordinance is mighty old um, in order to 
make all the square pegs fit in the, the square holes and everything else. Um, but uh, 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 Councilman, uh, it, it, it's in good, it's, it's very finely attuned, um, even though we'll probably have to fight some things uh, in a, uh, an occasional case uh, for the next couple of years. Okay, as you said, it's could be a two hour conversation and there's also other things wrapped up in litigation. So I don't, I don't wanna to dive too much into that, but I appreciate your background. I appreciate you taking the time to explain. The, the purpose of that question was to ask if those extra payouts have resulted in any disproportionate payout. So if those, those extra payouts, has that resulted in a, in a deficit of any kind in our pension uh, a pension balance um, in addition to what we were already anticipating because of the years of underpayments? Not, not in addition to what is uh, provided in the actuarial analysis. Right. So our, 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 when we talk about 100% of the actuarially required contribution or recommended contribution, uh, that includes or compensates for those overpayments and 100% and will keep us on track for where we need to be to pay out future promises. It does indeed. And uh, I think if you look at that line, mm -hmm. um, this line is gonna, is, is gonna probably move back and forth um, over, you know, until 2040, you know, 200 here, 200,000 here, 200,000 know, plus or minus. Um, and a lot of that movement uh, is sort of where we're talking. Um, you know, what is the, uh, you know, what is uh, CPI going to be in 2030? You know, they, they make an analysis and say, here's what we think it's going to be. And so every year that number is going to change a little bit until about 2045 when it falls off a cliff unless the mortality tables. And so, so there are three sort of elements, um, uh, you know, there's, because it's a close plan, um, it's mortality tables, um, it's CPI increase, uh, and it's, uh, no, we don't, well, we do. And it's the, the, um, the, the people who are still in that plan, that close plan, um, what their contributions are. Um, so that number is gonna wiggle a little bit, not a lot, but it's gonna wiggle a little bit and then it's gonna fall off the cliff. Uh, thank you for that explanation. Um, uh, thank you for that explanation. I, I uh, I, I wanna, I, not a conversation for now, but I kind of want to bookmark it. I don't know if this is more appropriate for the finance committee or for the fiscal stability committee. Um, I do think it's worth considering or assessing, you know, when we talk about, right, that cliff of the old guardian plan, um, while Seamers has been an improvement in ways, you know, I would love to see a full assessment of whether and, and I do recognize that seamers would require a legislative action for us to leave. Um, but I, I think it's worth consideration, right? It's worth an assessment, it's worth the research to dive into it and see whether or not it would make more sense for us to go into our own 401k like plan. I forget the exact term for it, but North Haven uses it, other municipalities use it. There's And there's been a lot of success in, in moving to those sort of more modern alternatives uh, that that you know the towns can see a lot of savings from. Um, there are still some existing uh, complications in seamers that still keep things a bit inflated, um, especially since the the state is relying on us uh, to to uh, <laughs> be part of a larger pool um, of retirees. Um, so in, in, a, in a way, you know, the idea was to uh, sort of, sort of um, spread the liability out and make the liability less for everybody, share the liability. And in, in a way, what we've almost done is, 
is is make that liability a bit bigger for some municipalities rather than others. So um, I think that's worth an assessment. I want to bookmark that. I know that now is not the time for that, um, but perhaps you know we can recognize what a benefit it is that we've moved away from the guardian plan and what that's going to look like over the years. Um, and perhaps there are, there are further adjustments we can make that can, that can help get some of our, you know, obligations under control and our liabilities under control. So thank you very much for, for, for entertaining that. I, I appreciate it. Um, Councillor at large, uh, McDowell, I will mention that the Fiscal Stability is Committee is planning to have a pension uh, discussion as soon as I can find time to schedule a meeting given our budget schedule. Thank you very much. Um, I have a few experts that are in waiting um, for that. You're welcome. Um, Councillor from the Fifth Farmer. Thank you, Chairwoman. Through you, uh, my first question, um, I, I don't know if I really understood uh, the answer or if I really caught the answer. So apologies on me, um, but what is our long-term strategy for buyouts? Through you, uh, Chairwoman. Well, we don't, we don't really do buyouts. Um, if you earn time and you leave before you're eligible to collect a pension, depending on what the timeline is, you can get a check for your contributions. Um, we, you will never get paid for that time. If you have enough time and you leave, but you don't want to take a pension, then it kind of sits on hold until you contact us and say, um, I'm ready to collect my pension. So, I mean, like, so, so you know, say, for, you know, you're, you're 50, you're a 50 year old firefighter and you're eligible for retirement and you're going to go start a landscaping business. So you don't really need the pension and you don't really want to take the check early because you want the lifetime benefit. You just say, hold it. Um, but we don't, we don't really buy out um, you only get what you are earned, and that is that. So, uh, uh, if you, you don't mind, Chairwoman, uh, through you, just uh, to clarify my thoughts, vacation and holiday payout, um, at the end of that, um, it's quite substantial. So, in terms of that, if you want to call that a, a buyout, what, what what would you call it? And then also, what is our plan to long-term mitigate those costs through you, Chairwoman? Uh, we, we call those accrued benefits. And you do get a check for those. And there is an account um, I don't have it in front of me, um, but there is an accrued benefits line uh, that uh, those are paid from. Um, the long-term uh, strategy, uh, some of it, uh, you know, has already been implemented. One thing that has been, you know, that I'll point out that has been enormously um, helpful is the movement to 24-hour fire forces or fire shifts. Why? Because even if you want to go fishing, you don't want to lose 24 hours worth of time. And so your chances of booking off are less. So our Garcia, you know, over the last eight or nine years is significantly lower than it was. Um, our overtime is lower because people aren't really mixing their shifts like they used to. Uh, and so those are the types of plans. It's also, a managerial philosophy. Um, my opinion, um, I think we are understaffed. And so when someone says, hey, I wanna take a vacation, the manager says, I can't, I, I can't let you go. And that happens a lot more than it used to. 
um, which leads to people sort of banking and collecting this time. Uh, so, you know, I, I, I think, I think, and, and I haven't been able to really kind of dig into the numbers on this, so I apologize, uh, counselor. Um, but I think there are things that have been done and I think that there are things to do. And I think that we all have to sort of saddle up and be prepared to work really hard because that is how you stop the collection. And then the contracts also play into this. Um, but if you're prepared to work really hard, that is how you stop the collection of time uh, for uh, bargaining units that don't, uh, or that, that, that have essentially no limit. Thank you. Uh, just one quick question uh, on a different matter on the town contribution. Uh, we are at 100% ARC. It yes. has been 23 years in the making. Um, so very happy to see that happen. Um, I guess my only question is, was there any stipulations from the state on our deferment? Um, we had a special resolution pass to defer uh, uh, um, that ramp up. So was there any stipulations or any other things on the horizon? Uh, no, the only thing we had to do was get to 100% of the ARC or the ADEC, depending on what language you speak. Okay, uh, thank you. I, I will leave my questions there. Um, uh, uh, just Chairwoman, if I could just, uh, do we know when our next public comment is for the budget? Council President McGarry. Um, we will have public comment. There'll be another public hearing um, once we have sort of gone through all the departments and our tabled items. Uh, we will then schedule another public hearing and another day for um, for us to vote on the final budget after considering the public input. Chairwoman and Council President, I see uh, someone has their hand up in the attendees. So I didn't want them to feel that we were ignoring them. Uh, so through y'all, thank you. Excellent. Um, are there any other comments on the pension expenditures? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? We've got one abstention, Ms. Renta. I got it, thank you. Great, you're welcome. Okay, and that does it for the pensions. And that, and that does it for us. Uh, <laughs> So um, we are a little bit early, so we'll go into recess and um, take your time. Oops, I forgot to get out my schedule here. Ms. Renta, what, we are next um, tomorrow night. Yes, and we have... Uh, um, so let me get my schedule, hold on. Doing a little faster than I thought. Um, it looks like we have personnel and fire tomorrow. Personnel and fire tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. Very good, so we'll, uh, we'll reconvene back in this space, uh, six o'clock tomorrow. Uh, we are in recess at 7.58. Everyone have a good night. Good night. Good night, everyone. Good night. Feel better, Kim. Um, Thank you. Yeah, feel better, Kim. <laughs>